The hottest new product of winter has to be the red Sensei powder. Now I personally have caught so many fish since I started adding this to my maggots, to my ground bait. It seems to bring fish on the feed quicker, which in the coldest weather like we've got today is absolutely essential. So how exciting that we've just launched a natural version of the new Sensei powder. Now we're on the River Don today, not far from Doncaster, and I wanted to get out and put some of these products through the paces. But the weather gods have conspired against me. It was minus four when I got here this morning, folks. You can see the ground is frozen solid. But I thought, what better test? I mean, this water temperature here must be no more than two or three degrees. There probably isn't still water in the country that we could have gone to today and caught. But I'm confident that here on the Don, by using some bronze maggots with some natural powder added, we're going to get a few bites. I'm going to feed a bit of bait, and then I'm just going to show you a couple of the other ways that you can use the powder. All I've done with these is sprinkle a little bit on this morning. I'm just going to feed some maggots so hopefully when we start fishing they'll be out there waiting for me. Things you can do with a natural powder that you couldn't do with the red. For example, we've got some bread punch here. Uh, bread punch? Bread crumb should I say. Liquidised bread. We could actually add the natural sensate to this. Obviously if you added the red to it it would be a, a pinky tinge. Um, which wouldn't look like bread at all. So you can make sensate infused bread, you can make sensate infused meat. This is just natural sensate powder added to luncheon meat and you can see it's not changed the colour but it has got that sensate attractant all over it. Obviously here we've got somewhere we've added red dye so if you wanted red meat obviously you can still do that with the red sensate powder. Adding the red powder to ground bait does make it go a slightly red tinge. So if you just want to keep your ground bait a natural tinge, you can obviously just add the natural powder to it. And lastly, as I said, adding it to maggots. I'm a Yorkshire boy. I like my bronze maggots when it comes to river fishing. So I've added quite a bit of powder to a tub full of bronze maggots. That's the only bait we're going to actually feed and fish with today. So let's get in and see if we can catch a few. Right, so we're not fishing too far out at all today. It's only about 18 metres, I reckon, out into the river. We're fishing with a long rod and a top and bottom style float or bolo. So the cast that we do, because it's quite deep here, um, and because we've got a lot of line, obviously, between the float and the hook, we don't want to get it tangled on the bank as we cast. So it's a simple cast of letting the, the, the float go, bringing the rod round your head in one motion and flicking it out. And then we're just feathering the line before it hits the water. As long as you keep it moving, you really can't go wrong with this sort of fishing. The problems come with deep rigs when anglers stop, you know, stop or, or suddenly move in a different direction as the cast in. Now that's in the water. Now we've set this float. I'm, I'm guessing from, from when I last fished here, roughly how deep it is. What I'm not doing today, it's flat calm on the surface. As you can see, it's a winter's day. I'm not crashing a plummet in because I can soon work out how deep it is and how deep to fish just by running a float through so obviously if you don't catch on the bottom you can put more depth on if you do start dragging the bottom then it might be a case of just taking a little bit of depth off but I'm just going to let let the swim tell me how to fish it if that makes sense and the same goes with the feeding you'll notice there I'm feeding slightly downstream of me now the reason for that is so I've got the option of casting if I want to right in front of me and running actually above the bait and into the bait so always do everything on a river well downstream because the more downstream you feed and fish the more options you've got now i'm not sure whether that was a bite i expect it'll take a little while today for us to really get the fish lined up but all we're trying to do is work out where they are and how they want the uh, the bait presented to them so i've got a little look on here it's a size 20 B520 at the moment, but I will be, sorry, B510 it is, but I will be stepping up to a 560 and trying two maggots very, very soon. Two maggots can be absolutely deadly, especially when there's the odd chub about, as there is today. So 
that's so just wrapped around the rod there as I've been talking. So I'm just going to unwrap that round and I'm just going to show you that cast again because it's a, I wouldn't say it's a difficult technique to master, but it's worth just noting how I do it. Obviously, make sure that the rig's all hanging free and then it's just a roll. It comes over your head and out. And that's all you need to do. Keep moving and you really can't go wrong with the casting on these long rods. A really good tip for this style of rod and line fishing on rivers, one of the best tips I've been given in fact, that makes life loads easier, is fish with a very light main line. Now, it's only actually three pound maxima that I'm fishing it, uh, with here, and that makes casting loads easier. It also, and perhaps more importantly means, you've got excellent float control when you are out in the river. So, any sort of wind on the water will affect how your float goes down the peg. And the thicker the main line, the more that's the case. So a nice thin main line's vital. I also, to make life easy, fish with quite a heavy leader. And by leader, I mean that's just a bit of line between, that's a little fish, a bit of line between the float, so to speak, or roughly where the float's mounted and the hook, where the shot are basically in the hook length. Tiny little fish. Let's hope we get some bigger than that, but it was minus four this morning. It's just an absolute joy, to be fair, to be out and getting bites off anything at all. So you've got to count your blessings on days like today, folks. So yeah, I use that 017 or slightly thicker um, leader just to help stop me getting tangled because I've got a strung out pattern on here. Or well, you can just see that against the sky there, but that's basically um, a tapered pattern of number eight shot um, starting very close together and getting further apart. And there's two reasons for that. It's a good compromise between presentation, i.e. making that bait fall nice and naturally, and casting weight and getting the bait down to where you need to. Whenever you have that sort of taper, you'll tend to find that you don't get tangles because the way it flies through the air means the weight, the weight sort of leads the way and the dropper shot follow it. So I've been fishing a little while now and I've fished quite a lot of times with this pattern and it's very, very rare you get a wrap over. And the beauty of it is, because we're all per nobody's perfect, we all get the occasional tangle, by using that thicker leader around your shot, if you do get a tangle, it's easier to undo because obviously you've got a nice thick line to work with. So just a single maggot. We've had a bite already. Oh, is that another one? No, I missed that one. So I'm just going to talk about one more little aspect of how I fish this float, and then I'm going to have a little fish and come back to you in a few minutes when I've, uh, when I've been fishing a while and hopefully worked a few things out. So when I'm fishing, I've always got the bail arm off, which allows the float to run down the river. But what I can do at any point is put my finger on the spool like that and slow down or stop the pace at which the float's going. So there's two reasons you'd do this. The first one, if for example, you felt that there was a bit of wind and maybe got the line behind your float and you wanted to make it all go in a nice straight line, you could dab your finger on the spool and mend the line as we call it, which means just keeping a straight line between the tip of your rod and your float. And the reason you need that is so that when you get a bite, you connect with it nice and directly. The other reason you can do it is a bit more tactical. What you can actually do if you want is slow down the flow as it goes down the peg and have the bait just kick up off the bottom, which sometimes brings a bite on a, on a tough day, but not always. So it's just a little tool to have in your arm and we need to work out today whether that's how the fish want it or whether the fish would rather have it running through. So I'm gonna sign off for now. I'm gonna fish for, I don't know, probably another, half an hour or so and work out how the fish want it and then we'll bring you a little update about how we're getting on. well sensate works and why it works we've got to look underwater so let me just show you in the tank now i'm going to put about a tablespoon of this 
dentate powder. Probably got about half a pint of maggots there, so not too much. It's about a tablespoon on there. And we're going to mix that in. So we just want to make sure basically that all the maggots are covered with it. Now, we've got bees in. Okay, there we are. Now, look at how that Sensate Natural Powder comes down behind the maggots and almost forms a cloud, but ultimately, most of it sinks. So it's down there with the maggots. Some of it, as you can see, is still stuck to the maggots. A lot of it's in the water column, and there's billions of fish-attracting particles there working to make fish feed quicker. That'll be travelling down the river today. Um, those micro particles will get much further downstream than the maggots will, so that'll be drawing fish upstream from right down there. Well, that is a Brucey bonus on what's been a tough day. I knew it was going to be tough. I mean, we've had some nice roach, it's probably a dozen fish in total, but we've just topped it off with a nice little chub. And we've nailed him. Look at that, he really wanted it right in the top lip. It's been a lovely short session. So I'll drop him back and I'll just run through the key points about this style of fishing once more. Nice light main line so that you can cast easily. You want to be able to loose feed, slide it down your peg so you can put your rig into your feed. And most importantly, keep changing, keep changing depths, keep changing how you hold your float back until you find the fish. Get out there, folks, because this is one of the very few methods that will work, even in the coldest and hardest of conditions. <laughs>